Okay, so I thought we'd um, have a little uh, look inside the box of this new kit I've just picked up. This is the P40F Warhawk by Trumpeter. Just been released in the UK, it's been out in the um, US for a little while. One thirty second scale. Um, obviously we're looking at a box lid, not much to report however, um, just probably worth noting that this is quite possibly the worst box art I've ever seen. Uh, it really is, I'm not sure, well I am sure what, they're, they're, there's a picture of this, uh, that's, um, I'm not sure who took it and what it's meant to be doing, I, I guess it's taken off or about to land and for some reason they've um, decided to use that as inspiration for the box art, so there we go, not much more to say on that. Um, so, inside the box we've got a few things, um, I've already done a little bit of research on this one, we'll get into the markings uh, at the end because that's where the main sort of uh, problems arise. Um, one thing to be said about Trumpeter and Hobby Boss, uh, they're absolutely brilliantly packaged, probably the best i come across. Um, now you've got the instruction manual that we'll have a little look through in a second. Um, well, everything's individually packaged. We've even got tape down uh, carrier film there on, um, I've cut that through, but it's, it's taped through. So it's very good, you shouldn't really get any damaged parts. We've got a photo etch fret there which thankfully does include harnesses once which uh, generally you have uh, plenty of space on the um, photo etch fret and uh, you don't get belts in quite a few of their uh, kits which can be a pain so I'll get all this out of the box and we'll have a look at the part so starting with the main sprue here we've got the wings so we've got the lower part of the wing and the upper part of the wings before we get into this there is um, Obviously with P40s there's a thing that a lot of people know and um, tend to uh, pick fault with is that uh, they didn't have a cockpit floor on a P40, it was the bottom of, well it was the upper part of the wing. So there's a sort of curved section, so the floor should be curved. It is not in this kit, there is a floor section, that's just something that most kits seem to do and um, I'm not particularly worried about that sort of uh, level of detail. There is one thing that we'll get into later that is a problem in this kit, but generally, as far as accuracy, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, could be better, could be worse. I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm going to be building this one out of the box, so uh, no problem really to worry about there. So let's look at some of the surface detail, which is the all-important stuff. We do have full riveting here, and we've got some very refined panel lines and rivet detailing, which is nice to see all the way across the wing, nice fabric texture here, and you do also get um, uh, where the flaps are here, uh, you get all of that detail provided in etched metal and also on the um, parts of the plastic. On the upper parts of the wing, we do have this section here that you can expose, and that looks to me like it's the uh, ammo boxes for the guns. I may be wrong, you can correct me in the uh, comments below, but I think that's what that is, ammunition boxes. Overall, it's looking pretty good. Um, there's no blemishes on the surface texture there at all and everything is very much in line. Trumpeter have in the past got rivets a little bit heavy and some panel lines a bit off but this looks um, very good. It looks, uh, well, it looks very, very good actually. So um, pleased with that. And next up we've got the two fuselage halves as well as a few other uh, parts for the aircraft and it's the uh, shows the iconic shape of the Warhawk. It is a short tail version. Um, there may be uh, longer tail versions to come. Uh, that remains to be seen. And inside we've got some nice um, internal structures here around where the tail wheel is exposed. Probably not going to see a lot of that but it's good to be there nonetheless. We've got an instrument panel here with um, hollowed out bezels which I've actually seen someone online do a build of. It's, it's so thin you can actually sand through the back and then show the um, decals which you have for the instrument dials coming through so that might be a better option. Here you can see where we obviously get a cockpit floor and it is straight, it's not curved and it, it actually makes up into a tub assembly and then fits in there. Um, and we've got the cutouts here for the exhaust and then the air scoop in below here as well which is uh, makes up one of the most iconic parts of this aircraft. Uh, here as well as a separate section and there's quite good detail to go in there and we've also got some photo etch grills on the back here that slip into these inserts here and then it goes through there and shows through. Same uh, level of detail all the way through this um, 
fuse large sides here with really great riveting and panel lining and it looks like everything's uh, represented there even in the cutout section here where the um, glass panel goes across we've still got riveting going on in there as well so it's very nice to see and I have seen a few of these built up from some of the guys in America on some of the Facebook groups who have already had this kit and um, they'd certainly usually make noises if there were any fit issues and they've got right the way through the build it does seem as though there's um, minimal issues all the way through so that's good to hear and that's what I'm looking for here for a sort of quick straightforward build which I like to get if I can in one thirty second scale it's quite handy for these fighters so here you can see again hopefully across this is quite simple parts breakdowns there's lots of large parts and they've um, not over complicated anything and it generally looks like a quite simple and well thought out process um, here we can see the flaps here with the um, details inside which I forget what the name of these are but um, here you can see it anyway so this is one side of it and that's the other side and this is where the photo etch parts are going to go which we've got here on the fret all the way through there so all of these parts and these two parts here as well form up the structuring on the inside of there and then they open up like that on the wing so they're the um, landing flaps and we've got riveting on the outside of those and no ejector pin marks on the inside which is good to know it would be a real pain if we had them in there but we don't so that's that's perfect as well very well thought out again these are the um, undercarriage uh, or wheel wells uh, inserts for the top of well they go inside the wing to give you some structure looking from the outside we've also got the fin horizontal stabilizers and a few parts here for the spinner which does actually have a split here not on a panel line there is a line on the spinner there with some rivet detail but uh, we're going to have an unnatural line there as well and the way that the propeller is actually supplied as um, one complete piece it might be worth sitting it into the back plate of the spinner and actually getting that um, set up the way it's meant to be then cutting the props off so you can actually sand this back and sort out the panel line and then putting the props back in again with um, sort of drilling and pinning sort of thing so that might be one option that uh, I was, again I've seen someone online mention that I thought was quite a good way around that here's the cockpit full ore which is actually um, a little bit sparse in detail and we've got the control stick here and a few other parts um, so I'm not quite sure how detailed the cockpit is going to be we'll see more of that in the next sprue which has got the cockpit sidewalls here we've got a multi-part seat uh, with the sides of it there and we've got rudder pedals there which are sort of well uh, they look quite good again it's a little bit um, a little bit basic I suppose for the scale some of the details on the sidewalls here could be done a little bit better I must admit and we've got a firewall here for the rear of the seat, bulkhead maybe, <laughs> might be the right uh, terminology for that. There's another part there for the cockpit. Uh, another control lever there to go at the side. Um, there is almost a little bit of damage here where they've been snapping off the ejector pin marks. Or um, parts, of, parts from the... Uh, mold that have been snapped off here and there is actually a sort of um, bend there but it's not a crack or a tear or anything it's not meant to be bent from what I can see so that might be something to look out for here you can see the main propeller there which is all in one section as I said before so it might be uh, once it's all together is actually gluing this bit in and then cutting these parts off there flush and then putting a sort of drilling into them and into there putting a piece of wire into here and then you can put them in after the nose cone is sorted out which might be a way forward got some drop tanks there's also a bomb included in this as well here are the wheel hubs uh, you've actually got brake discs it looks like um, molded on the rear of those and then you've got the plain fronts there as well and here are the two covers for the top of the wing as well which actually have internal detail again with no ejector pin marks which is good to see it's well thought out 
Then on here we've got the exhaust stubs and um, there's two types here and I don't think we'll be using these so this may point to um, a, a different option. They're in two halves but also hollowed out but what we'll be using are these parts here that get glued from the inside and then you've got the separate stubs here which are hollowed out and they do have a, a point there where it's joined with this um, little stub here that you need to remove and that is just on the lip of the open shroud so you just need to be a little bit careful cutting those off but that should be good as long as you cut those off flush you should be able to sand that back no problem and then there's a few other small bits here which I'm guessing are for the undercarriage before we get onto the clear parts and I think this is an old these are uh, the flaps or ailerons here for the tailplane as far as I can see so they go for the horizontal stabilizers and then we've got the um, parts of the gear doors there as well which are very minimal on this aircraft then we've got a separate container with four other bags in it inside the box which give you the clear parts which have been extremely well packaged and then wrapped in foam so we'll have a look at these and here you can see that hopefully we should have no problems on these and they are crystal clear uh, with that said, there does seem to be scratches here on the outside of this one. Um, I'm not sure which one we'll be using, actually. I can't even see a difference, but I'm sure there is a difference there. Uh, but yeah, so unfortunately we do have some scratches here on that window pane. But apart from that, it is absolutely crystal clear stuff, and... Um, as usual with Trumpeter, that is one way, one place that they do excel is in their clear parts. They are always extremely good. Uh, then we'll look at um, one of the parts here, which I do think is probably the most notable problem from an accuracy point of view. Well, it's not in this one yet, uh, but that's uh, well. Let's get to it. Seems I've led it up. Uh, so it's the windscreen, which does seem to be a very strange shape. Um, whether that's going to detract from the build at all, I'm not sure, once it's all together, but that windscreen does seem to be a little bit off. just doesn't quite have the, the right shape or the cross section. But um, I'm no expert on the P40, and nor do I want to be, to build this kit, so I'm going to go with it, but uh, you may find that that might be slightly off looked a bit weird to me when I was looking at some um, shots of it online and then we've got the side panels here as well which are the window panes that go on the side of the aircraft so that's all pretty straightforward and then that just leaves the tyres which are rubber wheels which is a bit of a bit of a pain but they are smooth there's no um, tread pattern there so that should sand off quite nicely providing you can get the uh, whatever method of sanding to get rid of that seam line in the middle there and then we've got the tail wheel but you know that's par for the course with trumpeter so you've got to kind of put up with it um, then looking at the large photo etch for it like I said mainly this is um, giving you the parts there for the ailerons uh, for the flaps but we've also got um, the seat harnesses here as well so you've got the, the shoulder harnesses and then the lap harnesses and a few other bits I'm not actually sure what they're for possibly the undercarriage doors they may have something to do with that and then the other side is those photo etch grills we'll have a quick flick through the instructions just so you can see the kind of layout and how um, everything's going to go together. It's a rather small sheet, it's only 15 steps to get this one together which is the sort of thing I like to hear and it's the general layout from Trumpeter, it's pretty well done exploded diagrams, there you can see the cockpit tub and here you can see the sort of detail that's going into it so we've got the side walls, the floor, the rudder pedals and the instrument panel all going together to bring that on uh, bring that up to uh, where it needs to be so yeah nothing really to report as far as uh, the instructions are concerned so we won't go all the way through them in depth um, 
you can there is one thing to point out here is that the details for the flaps which is very good as you can see all here this is where the flaps are and that's the full detail that you get from the photo etch parts going on that's where that part is so it's not for the um, wheel well doors it is this part makes up part of the uh, structures there in the flaps now looking at the decal sheet this is where we start to get into the area where there is a problem with this kit and um, hopefully it's not actually specifically with the decals sometimes trumpeter and um, oh dear that's not good the sellotape is just stuck <laughs> just stuck to the um, it's come off of the carrier film and stuck down on the decals and it's stuck right over the decal that I wanted to use as well so that's a pain now hopefully we can lift that up without damaging the decal and then we're going to stick this back down on the back side of the decal sheet well it did seem like a good idea using sellotape to stick the carrier film on but I would not advise this so maybe take a bit of care when you come to uh, take the carrier film off right well there we go we avoided that hopefully that will probably come to uh, show when we actually put the decal on nevertheless here is the decal sheet it's nicely printed um, everything is in very good register I can't see any issues whatsoever we've got a few dials here and then a few dials there as well for the instrument panel quite a few large parts of insignia and we've also got a shark's mouth there as well for the four different aircraft that you get as options and then you've got these white parts here which are for one of the options that go all across the top of the aircraft quite large um, carrier film around here so I would advise on this scale and plus we've got the rivets to worry about actually cutting around these as best you can I'll probably be separating um, all of this so I'll separate the round the round all with the star in it and then cut all around the five and the X and put them in all separately but that's what you get so it's a it's a nice sheet then we move on to the marking options so we have got like I just said four options so we'll start with the first one unfortunately um, as far as the P40 F is concerned it's not just an F I think there's an F1 F15 and F20 I may be wrong and there may be more um, variants but this is the first F so this is an F version 1 which has the short stubby tail the later versions have longer tails and then they go through into then they start moving on into the K and through to the N when a few things change but as far as we're concerned we're concentrating on the early F model unfortunately this marking option and this marking option were long tailed F variants so if you're worried about um, accuracy at all they aren't really applicable to this uh, this kit whatsoever now you could argue that that's getting into rivet counting sort of territory but um, I would uh, say that's not the case this is more about accuracy and um, this is actually wrong so this is markings for an aircraft that this kit cannot represent that's the first thing so this is for um, I've written here that they're extended it's for the longer tail so this is from the 68th um, fighter squadron and the 347th fighter group from January 1943 and this is based in the Guadalcanal something Trumpeter also failed to do is actually give you any information on what any of these uh, schemes are for we do have all of the paint call outs which is quite handy and quite extensive then going on to the B option which is actually a nice attractive option here it's one of the um, ones in the the early North Africa uh, campaigns because you've got the star with the yellow ring around it which we used in um, in and around the operation torch landings but again this is representing an aircraft which has a long tail 
Now I'll put the pictures up, I've managed to find reference pictures of all of these. So I'll pop them up at the end and you can see for yourself that these are actually long-tailed aircraft. Um, but this one's for uh, Lieutenant George Blednik and that's of the 57th Fighter Group from the 64 Fighter Squadron based in North Africa. Then we've got option C, which from what I can see in my research, this is the only marking scheme you can do out of the box without having to do any modifications to and for it to be anywhere near accurate. And this is uh, for the 86th Fighter Squadron from the 79th Fighter Group of the US uh, Air Force uh, in North Africa, April 1943. And this is X55 or 55, and it's also got some nose um, art just above where the exhaust stacks are. Some scrolled writing, uh, which is the Empress. Now I haven't been able to find a picture for this, so that's the good news. So you can, it can't be discounted, and this is um, at the minute. Do please write in the comments if you know anything about any of these options. Um, certainly if it's to the contrary of what I'm saying, or if it backs it up, or either way. Um, I'd also like to see a picture of this 5.5 uh, five if I can, so whether any of you can um, source a picture, that would be uh, and glad to see it. Uh, so this is all over the neutral grey undersides, and on the top we've got dark earth and midstone colour. Um, so that's quite a nice scheme, and that's the one I'll be doing with a red spinner there. Uh, there is the possibility that this should say the US Army underneath, but uh, I can live without that going on there. But I'm pretty sure all of these Warhawks that went over did have that uh, scrolled across the underside of the aircraft. And then we've got option D, which is uh, Lieutenant Robert um, Looney's aircraft from April 1943 in North Africa. And this is El Tiger. Uh, so... This is correct to an extent, but it needs quite a lot um, added to it to make it actually accurate. So um, we can really nitpick and get onto these crosses that shouldn't have tapered ends or anything like that. I'm not going to worry about that so much. But um, what this should have is US Army written across the bottom there. This should be 87, not 78, this side. So it's one side it's 87, and the other side it's 78. Um, also, across the top of the exhaust stacks here, just on the top of the cowling, it should say, in quite large white letters, El Tiger, so T-I-G-R-G-R-E, on both sides. And that's about it, really. Um, oh, yeah, and also the um, star should not have the yellow outer ring to it. It should be just the normal blue star. So, that's everything I could find from my uh, research. And it's a bit of a pain to have um, four colour call-outs, and as far as I can see, only one of them is actually relevant to the aircraft you're doing and accurate. This one is for a short-tailed PA-40F, but again, there's so much wrong with it, it's hard to say that that's actually um, useful. Uh, I've also found the serial number for this one as well, which as far as I could see was 114248, and that should be just across here. So, you know, make of that what you will. You can obviously use any of these and you can paint the aircraft up to this as, into your heart's content and be happy with it. I'd prefer myself just to model an accurate aircraft. I don't really care so much about everything being perfect about it, but I do like to at least start from the, um, from the outset that uh, I'm modelling an aircraft that it does actually represent, not when it doesn't, which is uh, the issue here. So hopefully that's um, useful to some of you. So there we are, the, um, that's the, a quick look inside the box and a little review on the P-40F Warhawk from Trumpeter in 132nd scale. Bit of a mixed bag, um, I suppose the good news is that the kit is relatively accurate, very well detailed and um, looks like it is a, a, a nice build. The marking options, you can get around that, there are decals available for 132nd P-40Fs, so you can always get um, an extra decal set and change the markings on this one, and they're actually much better markings from what I can see. Uh, Kits World actually produce two decal sheets for the P40F with two schemes in each, so there's four extra schemes you could use uh, by uh, getting hold of those decals if you uh, felt if you wanted to go down that route, and that would um, easily correct your problem that you've got out of the box. But as I say, I'm going to be making um, X55. I'm going to be building it relatively soon on the channel and I'll be doing it as a full build so 
Uh, hopefully that will back up what I've said here. I haven't gone in. I was going to test some of the decals and stuff, but I thought as I'm going to be building it, uh, we'll look at it in more detail then. And um, yeah, hopefully that's of uh, interest and useful for some of you.